Joining us now, Vivek Ramaswamy, former Republican presidential candidate. Vivek, uh, you are part of this new coalition, an important voice uh, for common sense conservatism. Um, your take on Vance's performance last night and what it said, not just about this ticket, but by, about the credibility of the media and all those establishment types who just raked Vance across the coals for several weeks after he was picked. Well, look, I think J.D. did outstandingly. I wasn't surprised by that. He's a good friend, and I'm proud of him for his performance. I actually left feeling pretty sad and sympathetic towards Tim Walls. It's not his fault that he was put in that position, but I bring that up because it says something about the machine on the other side. See, there were other good possibilities, as you raised, for somebody who could have been a decent vice president that at least could have held their own last night. They didn't pick that for the same reason that Kamala Harris was picked as the vice president, for the same reason she was picked as the nominee. On their side, they would prefer somebody who does not actually have independent thoughts because we're really not up against a candidate here, Laura. It's not Kamala Harris. It's not Joe Biden. It's not Tim Walls. We're up against a machine. And what Donald Trump is going in there to do is to dismantle that machine. And the more we see it that way, the more the rest of it actually makes sense. It's not about Republicans versus Democrats in the 2000s or 1990s sense. This is about the everyday citizen, we the people, saying no to the bureaucratic and managerial class. That's the dividing line in this country. I thought J.D. did an outstanding job last night of laying that bare. But the more we see that clearly, the more successful we're going to be. Uh, when you talk to regular folks, which I'm blessed to be able to do on a daily basis, they, they often say, you know, everything's so negative. And I like the fact that Vance talked about restoring the American dream. Obviously, Trump does that all the time. They don't let him get very far in doing that. But Vance was able to state that over and over and over again. He said, there's no reason why it should be dying. This is an amazing country. So let's get the, let's get the job done. We'll have fun doing it. I, I think that's the kind of optimism that's drawing in a lot of these uh, new Republican voters. And I think that much more than the lawfare and all this other nonsense, that is infectious. I think it is. I, here's what I would say, Laura, is that populism has historically been a word in American politics that's associated with negativity. I see a wide open vacuum for what I would call a positive populism in America. Positive populism, not just running from something, but together as a people running back to something, running back to that American dream where, yes, with hard work and dedication, you can achieve the maximum of your God-given potential and by the way, this is a big theme right now, too, while speaking your mind freely at every step of the way. That, too, is part of the American dream. And so that's what I want to see more of in this country. I think this is the future direction of the conservative movement right there. It is populist, but it's a positive populism that has an alternative vision of our own. What I think we can even do more of in, the, in our movement and taking that to a more positive direction is to stand unapologetically for capitalism. We don't have to apologize for that. We have an anti-capitalist party in the Democratic Party. We can also be the party that says, you know what, we don't make people apologize for success, but we're actually the party that stands for lifting everybody up, black or white. Yeah, and I working think that's class. how we built this multi-ethnic yeah. working class coalition. Yeah, when, when we had wages going up as they were under Trump for the middle class, for the yeah. blue-collar workers, that's what brought this economy back. That's why people were so optimistic before the uh, pandemic hit. Uh, Vivek, is it true that you are thinking seriously about running, was it for governor of Ohio, I was just reading? I think a lot of people are excited about that, well, look, uh, I, that idea. <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some decisions shortly after the election. What I will say is we see some of the events when I visited Springfield, people in this state pleading with me to do it. I have to take that pretty seriously. There's a lot of possibilities for the future, though, Laura. And w what I want to do is have the biggest possible impact on the country possible. We're working within a short time to save this country. Donald Trump's going to do his part from the top. But it's going to be up to us to each play our own roles. And, and we're going to make decisions for me shortly after, hopefully, not a close election, but I still see the possibility of a landslide-style election that unites this country. Let's achieve that in the next 35 days, and we'll count our eggs after that. All right, Vivek, thank you so much. Great to see you, as always, my friend. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.